Previously on My Thoughts Will Probably Offend You. I'm done with this. Was the night before Christmas and all little pug children trotted their paws off to bed so that Santa would come by with toys, treats, and snuggles in his sled. But down in the tiny suburb in Southern California lived a little pug named Yoshi who was determined to stay awake so she could meet Santa when he brings her the one thing she wished for the most, a little human baby brother. So she put out the milk, she put out the cookies, she even kept a few for herself. and left her wish list out for Santa Paws, and turned on her favorite show, Puppy Dog Pals, and she waited. And waited. And waited. Then finally, she heard the footsteps, and... Do you know who I am? Mama Krampus, half goat, half demon. Punishes naughty little pugs around Christmas time. Been in a variety of movies where I have to add, did not do me justice. Anyway, that's not the point. I'm here because you've been a bad dog. Oh, so the little naughty pug still has the audacity to ask for a present. Well then fine. Here you go, child. <laughs> you see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. This video is sponsored by me and my lifetime support group. Yes, this is my day look. The lifetime support group that comes with a 12 week gym program, two home workout programs, and a lifetime Facebook support group. That's right, getting healthier is a lifestyle. So of course you need a support group that will always be open where I'm very active daily. If you're interested, the link is below. And on Instagram, I promise a giveaway. And to win the giveaway, all you have to do is literally look below. I am very grateful for all of you hitting the subscribe button and just being here and communicating with me. I didn't want to just reward one person when there's so many of you. So down below, I have a grocery list, an example meal plan of how I eat, and a pretty basic back and shoulder workout because you guys are always asking what I do for my shoulders. You do need a gym, so if it's not open due to the pandemic, please just save it and use it later. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications. Okay, it took a lot of work to morph into my true form. Now, let's get started. <clears throat> For months now, I've been getting inquiries on my Instagram DMs. Inquiries like, Michelle, I noticed in your video you don't have abs anymore, and you just look kind of big in that area. Are you expecting? Michelle, I really noticed you've been glowing, not to mention the protruding baby bump that you're trying to hide. I don't mean to be rude, but can you please tell us if you're pregnant or not? I've been getting these messages, not just this month since I've been teasing it, but for the past probably two months. Honestly, I can't blame you guys. I had a huge gut that would not go away and increasing every week. I kept putting on weight. My pants weren't fitting. I even had morning sickness and swollen feet. Hell, I thought I was pregnant myself. I even took a pregnancy test and weeped while I was waiting for the results and about to be on I didn't know I was pregnant because it wasn't a good pregnancy. Something was wrong with me and the baby because I was still uh bleeding, right? That's that's not good if you're pregnant and you're bleeding. I don't know, it was frustrating because I felt like it was overnight or I was so busy working I didn't notice the signs until my stomach just dropped. Like I said, I don't know, I just have a fear, a deep, deep fear of pregnancy and ripping my vagina into two. So I was horrified, but I had to take the pregnancy test and I was 
not pregnant. It was just my endo with a dash of PCOS, but usually the gut would go away in a day or two, and this time, it wasn't. These two things had me going insane, feeling like I was going to poop out a little minion who was going to wipe their little peanut butter and jelly hands all over my evil layer white walls. And then, of course, people started noticing on YouTube. Almost as if they were demanding that I make sure to tell them if I'm having a little fledgling or not, because they noticed my huge baby bump. So I thought I would answer in the most elaborate, theatrical way possible, with a Christmas series stringing you guys along with an episode extravaganza. And of course, in my true form. Yes, watchers, I am Mama Krampus. No, I am not pregnant. Yes, I have a new son named Butter. Everyone Knows it's me. Yes, I have something called PCOS and endometriosis that make me look at least five months pregnant. That a few of you guys have noticed a few months ago, which has led us here. And we have an action packed episode today. So let's run through the schedule. Whitney Waythor, a fat personal trainer who says she's obese because of PCOS. Two, what is PCOS and endometriosis? Celebrities who have endometriosis and PCOS but don't use it as an excuse. Four, bloating and inflammation and how I fixed mine. What the f was going on with that gut and why wouldn't it go away? We're gonna talk about it. Recommended diets for PCOS and endometriosis. Working out with PCOS and endo. In the world of fat positivity where people get praised to be obese, or in their words, fat, there is a woman who is named Whitney Waythor. She received a show called My Big Fat Fabulous Life. She was first recognized because Waythor is a large woman who can also dance. And her video racked up a lot of views and boom, TLC had to get some of that sweet, sweet recognition too and thus gave her a show called My Big Fat Fabulous Life. There's PC terms for everything these days, but fat people are fair game. Someone has to fight for us. I'm Whitney Way Thor. I'm 30 years old. I live at home with my parents and I'm a fat dancer. In Waythor's younger days, she was about 200 pounds lighter than she was now and said she had always struggled with self-image and weight. And she blames all of her weight gain on something called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay, that might be a stretch, but I have never heard her say that she eats too much. Whenever I watch the show and her weight slash struggle comes up, she brings up PCOS. I hate people thinking that I'm lazy. I have polycystic ovarian syndrome, that's PCOS for short. Two thirds of women with PCOS are overweight or obese. It's really easy for me to gain weight and really difficult to lose weight. Rather than her diet, except for the episode where her trainer calls her out while she's crying in the car with a bunch of empty junk food wrappers all around her. And then I'm in the middle of the day and I'm starving. So I go and I make a choice and it's not a great choice, but I try to make it better. Make the choices during the planning stage. You plan it out. You don't wait until your only know, option is a fast food restaurant. But other than that, Whitney really plays up the fact that she's this way because of PCOS. But the show was a hit. People said she was funny, adorable, relatable, and not skinny. The show is doing so well that it's on its eighth season, which is getting pretty juicy. <laughs> Apparently the fiance that she was with, who was kind of iffy about having children, cheated on her, married some other woman, impregnated her, wait for it, a thinner woman. Oh come on, she's thinking it. I would be. I would also be rather pissed, honestly. Whitney Waithor also went on to become a personal trainer. Her business is called No BS, aka No Bull Active Fitness for Everyone. It's $20 a month, and according to the website, they're pretty active in the program. You get about five workouts every week and a bonus video, and the only equipment you would need is two to five pound dumbbells, a mat, or a pillow, along with a chair. And it's a very good price if you really want quantity. I can't rate the quality because the part that I'm critical with, though, is the name. No BS, no bullshit, which translates in my head to no excuses. The business name and the fact that she uses PCOS to justify weighing 330 pounds and is a personal trainer when you learn, when you're at least getting certified, that obesity is not something that you want to attain. But nonetheless, she says she has it. This is why she's fat. And besides the fact that she doesn't have a baby yet and PCOS can make it significantly hard, it's working out great 
for her. Whitney Waythor reportedly makes five to ten thousand dollars per episode, and each season seems like it has about eleven to thirteen episodes, except for season two, which has twenty-three episodes. So she's making quite the pretty penny just from the show that highlights how fabulous her life is being fat. Along with the sweet, sweet dollars from the show, she has brand endorsements, a book called I Do It With The Lights On, and ten more discoveries on the road to a blissfully shame-free life. And of course, her personal training business, where she probably gets most of the traffic and clients from fans who watch the show. Fans who probably are also overweight and look up to her. Allegedly, for the year 2020, her estimated income is close to $4 million. But people started to speculate and question Whitney Waythor's intentions. She makes so much money on the pure fact of being obese. She has a show where her weight is the main subject. She's an avid voice in the body positivity or fat acceptance community. She even became a personal trainer, which means she's making money to help people become a better them. She's gone through a few weight loss journeys, all of which she has failed. So the question stands, does she really want to lose the weight or is she just dandy the way she is because if she gets thin, she will just be an average person. The fat acceptance community won't be happy with the weight loss. We all saw how they flipped over Rebel Wilson, Adele, and now Lizzo. Future video, FYI. So she would lose the bulk of her support in which her business could possibly fail. Even her show would have to change. It would no longer be my big fat fabulous life. Maybe my skinny fabulous life? <laughs> Who the hell would watch that? And the word fat really just reels people in, I know. Look at the title and you're here. Boom. Proof. Fat. Does she just use this PCOS shtick to shut the people up calling her lazy and not dedicated to her weight loss journey because she has a condition that supposedly prohibits her from losing weight? All while still being able to make a substantial amount of money while looking motivational as the girl who overcame PCOS and didn't let it hold her back. When she didn't overcome PCOS at all. In fact, she gave right into the deep dark pits of PCOS. POS by overeating and being in the obese category. Because these two aspects can make PCOS a hell of a lot worse. And that's exactly what it wants. So with all of that being said, let's take a deeper dive into what PCOS is and endometriosis and see if PCOS really does force someone to be over 300 pounds. Is it just a set in stone condition that seals your fate? I have absolutely no way out of setting yourself free from the realm of obesity. PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome is a hormonal disorder common among women of reproductive age. Women with PCOS may have infrequent or prolonged menstrual periods or excessive male hormone levels, which can cause acne and facial hair. The ovaries may also develop numerous small collection of fluids and fail to regularly release eggs. The exact cause of PCOS is unknown. If you are diagnosed with PCOS by a doctor and you're not just self-diagnosing yourself and using PCOS to justify your lack of ability to be able to stay at a calorie deficit, you can expect all or few of these complications. Infertility, gestational diabetes, miscarriage or premature birth, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is a severe liver inflammation caused by fat accumulation in the liver, <clears throat> which is why obesity is something you probably should want to avoid. Visceral fat is not the business. High blood pressure, high blood sugar, and abnormal cholesterol triglyceride levels that significantly increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. Abnormal uterine bleeding, cancer of the uterine lining, and obesity is associated with PCOS and can worsen complications of the disorder. So why do so many people pair PCOS with obesity? Women with PCOS produce too much insulin or the insulin they produce does not work as it should. The inability of insulin to function normally is why women with PCOS tend to gain weight or have a hard time losing weight. But that doesn't mean it's not possible. It just takes a long time. It's just a lot of you mortals don't have the attention span to be able to stick to a calorie deficit long enough to be able to see results. And PCOS makes it harder. Participating in daily exercise and certain diets can help you erase a lot of the concerns connected with PCOS. Eating high in sugar foods or food that spike your insulin levels affects women with PCOS more than regular people. And the fatigue is a bitch. I have passed out on the floor being so tired, especially when I was eating junk food. But because of the change in my diet, I don't have many symptoms from PCOS. Now we will get to the diet and exercise portion in a minute or five, but first let's tackle Mama Krampus's nemesis. PCOS? <laughs> I laugh in its face. But endometriosis, 
even the name. As Mama Krampus is changed, just shaken. Endometriosis is an often painful disorder in which tissue similar to the tissue that normally lines the inside of the uterus, the endometrium, grows outside of your uterus. Endometriosis most commonly involves your ovaries, fallopian tubes, and the tissue lining your pelvis. Rarely, but can occur, endometrial tissue may spread beyond pelvic organ. With endometriosis, the endometrial-like tissue acts as endometrial tissue would. It thickens, breaks down, and bleeds with each menstrual cycle. But because this tissue has no way to exit your body, it becomes trapped. The pain from all of this can be severe. Many women who have been through childbirth says that the pain is similar to the contractions you get before you give birth. In the past, I would black out in public from the pain. It's wonderful. It's great. Every month you get contractions for up to seven days and you're not even pregnant. Who wouldn't want that? It really makes me want to birth my own little minion so that I can experience the real thing. Let's go over most of the signs of endometriosis. Painful periods. Pelvic pain and cramping may begin before and extended several days into your menstrual period. You may also have lower back and abdominal pain. Pain with intercourse, fatigue, pain with pooping, excessive bleeding, constipation, nausea, bloats. Let's talk about bloat because that's the reason why we're here because y'all noticed months ago that my stomach didn't look the same way it did previously. Bloating and fluid retention are common endometriosis symptoms. One older study found that 96% of women with endometriosis experienced belly bloating compared with 64% of women who didn't have the condition. And sometimes even eating healthy won't exclude you from getting the endometriosis gut. Buildup of endometrial-like tissue can cause inflammation in the abdomen. This can result in swelling, water retention, and bloating. The endometrial-like tissue can cover or grow into the ovaries. When this happens, trapped blood can form a cyst, which may cause bloating. Women with endometriosis are more prone to small intestinal bacterial growth and fibroids, which may also lead to bloating. Endometriosis often causes issues with digestion, such as constipation and gas, which you guessed it, can also lead to bloat. And can I just say, many people will tell me that I'm crazy or you don't look pregnant or they just kind of downplay my belly pain because I'm fit. I even get comments sometimes saying, well, you're standing different. Bitch, no, I'm not. Well, now I gotcha. Most of y'all said I look pregnant. Gotcha, bitch. It's actually very frustrating when I talk about my bloat and people look at me like, yeah, whatever, you're fit, who cares? When it really can mess with your head. It really me up when I was a younger demon and didn't know what was going on and how to fix it and it can still F me up. I mean to go from this to this in a few days and it wasn't going away. I haven't experienced that in a long time. So the most painful and depressing symptom of endometriosis for many women who want children is infertility. I'm just fairly lucky that I don't want to birth my own child. I get it. If I change my mind, I am completely fine with just adopting. But for many others, it's an extremely sensitive and sad topic for them. If I was someone who really wanted children and got those messages that I got earlier a few months ago, that would have sucked because I look freaking pregnant and I don't have a baby and constantly having to tell people, no, I'm not pregnant. I'm just fucking bloated as shit. Thanks for noticing why I look like shit and feel like shit. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, small story time. There was a time when no one could go get my medication from CVS and I was forced to leave my evil lair and pick it up myself. I strolled into CVS with hair smashed up in a messy bun, shorts that were cut at the side because my stomach was huge and I didn't want anything tight around my gut, a t-shirt where my stomach still was very protruded over my shorts. I'm standing in line looking like a straight up wall Martian and the lady in front of me turns around and says, Oh my gosh, you're glowing. And takes her hand and places it on my stomach. Which by the way, it was painful to touch back then. And says, don't worry, you're almost done. Hello darkness, my old friend. Approximately one third to one half of women with endometriosis have difficulty getting pregnant. Like I said, many women who want kids or even don't want kids and just have body issues are very, very sensitive to this. People will come up to them and just randomly congratulate them on their pregnancy. And it's a constant reminder that they don't have a little minion inside their stomach. It's just blow. Many women who have endo will find some type of fertility treatment. The fertility treatments that are recommended is an IUI or IVF in vitro fertilization. 
which keep in mind can get pretty expensive and is not always successful, which can be very depressing to many women. According to the NCSL, the average IVF cycle can cost anywhere from $12,000 to $17,000, and that's not including medication with meds. The cost can then rise to about $25,000. So you can see the frustration that many women who have endometriosis might have if they want to have their own biological child. That is something that Whitney struggles with and the fact that the dude cheated on her got another woman pregnant. Ooh, I might not agree with everything she says, but I have to agree that that is a shitty move. I see many people in the body positive community similar to Whitney Waythor use PCOS as an excuse to be obese and to justify their unhealthy size. I've had many people in my very own comment section when I critique people from the fat positive movement say some people have issues like PCOS and that's why they're fat and then I come back and have to respond with honey I have PCOS and endometriosis it's a double whammy over here I truly believe Winnie Waythor uses it as an excuse to stay obese and profit off being fat and hey profit off of being fat I'm all for that if that's what you want to do but don't try to act like you have to stay that way because of PCOS PCOS does not seal your fate and force you to be over 300 pounds that's a myth and quite frankly a straight-up lie. There are other celebrities that have it and struggle but also know that they have to pay extra attention to what they put in their bodies. One being celebrity trainer Julian Michaels who has endometriosis and PCOS. You know, the woman that people say is super mean and she's naturally thin and it's so easy for her. In my opinion, when it comes to PCOS, the key is to look for the reasons your hormones are out of whack in the first place and address that. The top reasons are as follows crap food and way too much of it. The crap food can completely screw up your insulin levels and your body's ability to properly utilize insulin. Plus, chemicals in heavily processed foods and foods sprayed with various pesticides herbicides and fungicides can also throw off androgen and estrogen balances. Fitness is the number one way to improve insulin sensitivity, so inactivity on top of a poor diet is insult to injury. She also stresses to not overeat. And that goes for anyone, but women with PCOS, it just makes it even harder. Other celebrities who have PCOS include Daisy Ridley. She spoke openly about the necessity and importance of keeping track with your health. Daisy also has endo and PCOS. Oh. I love when I find a fellow sister. But she goes on to describe how with some dietary changes, she's feeling better, saying, with some help from a dermatologist and cutting out dairy, wham, except for spontaneous ice creams, and cutting down sugar, bigger wham. But gotta do what you've gotta do. Victoria Beckham, who also mentions paying attention to what she eats, and many others who all have similar struggles with sensitivity to weight gain and the struggle of infertility, but knowing to not let PCOS or endo get worse. The key is to have a healthy lifestyle and weight. So what is the difference between these women and Whitney Waythor and the other people in the fat positive community they seem to have found a solution instead of saying, I'll just embrace PCOS and be obese. No, they embraced PCOS by not letting it take control of their lives and use it as a crutch. They took control and found a solution. Yes, they had to work harder than the average person, but they did it and they're still doing it. Instead of saying, well, this is my life now, fills car with junk food and then says PCOS. This stuff keeps you from dancing the way you need to dance. For me, like you look at this and you think how bad it is and I look at this and I think how good I did. And since diet and exercise can really help women with these conditions live a more normal life, Let's go over all of that. Now, I definitely still struggle with inflammation. The time I was getting all those messages, like I said, I thought I was pregnant because my blow and inflammation around my whole body was not going away, and I haven't experienced that probably since I was a teenager before I discovered what PCOS and endometriosis was. There was a few things that I've stopped that I've been doing for so long that I really had the reminder that it's very important for me to stick to this routine. Otherwise, it shows. When it started getting cooler in California, I stopped drinking the amount of water my body needed. I struggle with drinking water as it is, but especially when it's cold outside. And drinking water helps with inflammation. I also stopped for a while now drinking my ginger root and dandelion root tea, which helps significantly with digestion, gut health, and inflammation. I personally just hate the taste, but after not drinking it for months, it really caught up to me, and I finally got back into drinking it. And like you see, my stomach is feeling so much better. They're pretty beneficial for anyone, but especially for people who have gut issues, aka people with endometriosis and PCOS. I also was staying at a calorie deficit 
deficit or maintenance, but I was eating way too many hot Cheeto treats and junk food really affects me hard. But we gotta be truthful, y'all. That gut didn't just sprout out for absolutely no reason. Something else was going on, and it turned out I was slacking, and it showed. And these three little simple fixes, minus reducing the hot Cheeto consumption, really helped me. Now let's talk about overall diet for endometriosis and PCOS. Because women with PCOS have higher than normal insulin levels, many doctors will tell clients to go on a keto diet, but that was way too extreme for me. So I made sure to make sure that my diet was full of high fiber foods, which can help combat insulin resistance by slowing down digestion and reducing the impact of sugar on the blood. Foods like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, collard greens, arugula, green and red peppers, beans, almonds, berries, sweet potatoes. Foods that help reduce inflammation is also key. Salmon. Salmon is something I try to incorporate even though I hate most fish. Salmon is fattier, so I do tend to like that more. Spinach and kale. I make sure to freeze a lot of spinach, put about a cup and a half in a smoothie with a little bit of strawberries and a few slices of bananas. Also something I stopped doing when it got colder. The things you want to avoid are really things that most people probably want to avoid, but with PCOS and endometriosis, it can make all of your symptoms worse. Refined carbohydrates. Refined carbohydrates cause inflammation and exacerbate insulin resistance, which once again is the reason why PCOS women have a hard time losing weight. That constant rise of insulin. Since PCOS puts you more at risk to cardiovascular disease, cardio is very important. 20 to 30 minutes of cardio like walking, jump rope, sprinting, Jacob's ladder are all great to do three to five days a week. Honestly, I try to get some type of activity in daily. Strength training can improve the function of insulin in your body and can also improve your metabolism by building more muscle mass. As you can see, it's pretty much how most people should be working out. Strength training mixed with some cardio, nothing special. I saw a few articles saying the PCOS workout or the beginner workout for PCOS, where it's just push-ups and body weight squats. They aren't special for PCOS resistance training and cardio are, are great for, for most people. If you see anyone marketing towards PCOS workout, that's kind of weird. Something I do notice with myself though is that I can't do any type of sprinting a few days before my period starts. If I do, I will end up with worse cramps than I do on my period. So I've learned to stick with just weightlifting and moderate cardio a few days before my period. And lastly, I found that a Chinese herb, something that you guys mentioned to me in my comment section called Dong Ke, Dong Kue, donkey I don't know but taking it a few days before my period then right when my period starts the first sign of back pain really I take the real drugs from my doctor called neoproxen and that was a game changer I tried only taking the Chinese herb and not the neoproxen and it worked for a few cycles and I don't know what's with my body but I think it just loves to work against me and it adapted and it doesn't work by itself anymore but now this method seems to work out great for now. I'm able to walk around, I don't do anything crazy, but I can function, and yes, many doctors prescribe birth control, and I've tried that, I will never go on it again, I went back crazy, bloating was through the roof, even my face was puffy, it was insane. There are also surgeries for endo, like laparoscopic surgery, you can also get your tubes tied or a full on hysterectomy. I want to get the surgery, but just like pregnancy, I have a deep fear of surgery, so I just try not to think about it. So people, let me make it clear to you, I am not pregnant and PCOS and occasionally on video because I have learned to accept the blow and not really hide, I kind of just do my thing and occasionally you'll see my stomach look quite large and not all the way snatched as it usually is. Also, you probably shouldn't ask random people if they're pregnant or not. I'm personally fine with it. It just helps me bring more awareness to these two problems, but I do know many people who are very sensitive about it. Maybe she's pregnant, maybe it's just endometriosis mixed with PCOS and she feels like shit. Leave her alone. Y'all, I just saw this randomly before I finalized this video, and we all love 90 Day Fiance on this channel. Well, Erica posted this photo, no caption, even hinting that she's pregnant, and people are commenting in the comment section and asking her butt if she's pregnant, and she is not. And I'm pretty sure she's upset because people are pretty much calling her fat. But she had a lot of body issues in the past, so I'm sure it's very hurtful for her. I do have to say thank you, and I truly am not offended by that. You guys can ask me if I'm pregnant whenever you want. I'll tell you I have endometriosis. I just wanted to make a very deep video about this topic because I have been getting a lot of these questions in my comment section when I mention I have PCOS and endometriosis. But I think if you guys didn't ask, it wouldn't have twinged something in my brain to at least like check it out and 
actually start doing a little bit of research and what I'm doing differently as to why it won't go away. So thank you from Mama Krampus. But I do have a new baby, or what I consider a baby, and his name is Butterscotch. Yes, Yoshi's little brother. Everyone knows it's Butter. Let me. Join us next time for his induction to the cult, and Merry Christmas. I'll see you next time. Yes, I am on my way